Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars and welcome back to the channel. Today, it is 98 degrees outside and it's 81 degrees in the shop here. I need to invest in a fan, but uh, we're gonna work on the 59. So really quick here, I just wanna show you guys what we've been working on. Um, put a motor, trans, new drive shaft, brakes, fuel system, all that good stuff in this car. This one runs and drives. Just picked up the 66 Buick Special out of a lady's uh, backyard. Nice car, has a 300, I think it's a 300 Buick. Small V8. Working on this one, you guys will see this in a video before too long. But the, the main reason we're doing a video today is this 59 Biscayne. Um, got it to run and drive, you guys saw that last week. Um, motor was locked up. Since then, got a lot of new parts here. Brand new starter right there. Uh, new coil, I got this wired up on a toggle switch. New cap rotor points, uh, ignition parts, spark plug, spark plug wires. Uh, brand new water pump, lower ro radiator hose, up radiator hose. I know this isn't like the ideal situation, but I cannot find a radiator hose for a six cylinder that actually fits. Um, got this just kind of bypassed. Uh, radiator's coming tomorrow, so we're gonna put a brand new radiator in it. Um, brand new brakes. The brakes and the wheel cylinders are done. It does stop on its own, but the shoes are pretty, pretty thin. So we're gonna change out the shoes. But today, before the shoes arrive tomorrow and the radiator arrives tomorrow, we're gonna drop the old tank. Um, we're not putting this one in today. The sending unit is still not here, but I'm gonna show you guys quick uh, how to drop a 59, 60 gas tank. All right, so first things first, the cat always likes to be where I am. These are pretty easy to do. Compared to a 61 to 64, I like these style tanks a lot better. But uh, obviously disconnect your vent. Come on, kitty, get out of my way. He's behind the camera, but he's in front of me. So get out of the way, kitty. Uh, I need a new vent tube here. This, this rubber line's pretty gross. There is a single bolt right here that holds the neck in place. And then these two bolts come down right there and right there, and the whole tank drops. The best way to do this, I'm not gonna film all this because this is a pretty you know, tedious shop work, but you disconnect um, your fuel line and your gas gauge wire at the back, take these loose, have a floor jack underneath here, and you kinda wanna work it down and out because this neck will get in your way. So the problem with that is that if this thing's full of varnish, which it is, um, varnish ruins my fuel pump, so I just don't even mess with it. I just try to keep it level, bring the whole thing down, and then put the, the varnish gas in a bottle when I'm all done. So the neck can get in the way. Um, so you just have to kind of work it back, and then once the neck is free, just drop it down. So just kind of out and, uh, and get out of the way. So two bolts, one vent, a gas line back there, and the, the fuel pump or the fuel gauge wire, and one bolt right here. And uh, this tank will be out probably 15, 20 minutes at most. Um, if you're experienced like me, it'll take about an hour because that's how it usually goes. But tomorrow when the fuel sending unit arrives, I'll show you guys my way I figured out how to get these to not leak because these gas tanks, they are brand new, but they leak a little bit of gas, at least in my experience. And I've got a way to get them to stop leaking and I'll show you guys that tomorrow. With that being said, let's drop the old tank and get the new tank ready to go. All right, so the fuel tank is out. And actually, it's really freaking solid. It's probably, the, it is the nicest tank I have. Not probably is, it is the nicest original tank I pulled out of the car. However, even Kansas dry cars still break bolts. And as you guys can see here, that bolt's not broken, but it, uh, it is distorted. Here's one I broke. So if they don't break, don't change them. But if they get distorted and whatnot, I mean, probably a, a good, thing to do, um, but I will show you guys how to do this on a 59. So 5960, there are these two little tangs right here, and you have a carriage bolt, and you guys can see how curved that thing is. But normally it just sits down in there. Once it sits flush, you beat those tangs over the bolt, it doesn't spin, and you put your gas tank in. So all you have to do is grab a trusty screwdriver or a punch, and knock those back, that'll be a, uh, a stopper nut up on top here. Just take that loose as well as the initial nut. Take the two tangs off, lift up the carpet, which it's a vinyl floor mat, which kind of sucks it got ruined, but it's just so dry and brittle you can't really help that. And you take it right out and you get a fresh one. 
All right, so the new 5 16 sending unit is in. And the little trick that I have is first of all, go get some brass or copper washers. Um, these kits do not come with the screws or the hardware, which is kind of BS, but that's beside the point. And the gasket that comes with it, it's a solid, um, you know, rubber circle gasket with a couple holes cut out for the screw holes. So what you want to do is these two screws, the last tank I put in like this was in my black car and right here was leaking. So I, this time, I pulled the gasket down with a screwdriver, just kind of pried it down a little bit, just so it got more of a mating area. And then I tightened these down um, first, just kind of um, get them about halfway, then the, these two, then this one, then crank these down, then crank down this top one here, and then the centers, and that seems to work. Um, I did that on the black car after it was leaking, redid the gasket, tighten it that way, and it works. So that's kind of my little tip of the day, but make sure you guys have a small screwdriver and pry that gasket down, because it's not perfectly circle, it'll kind of oblong, and especially right here, there's not a whole lot of uh, gasket surface. So try to get that down, and make sure this bottom part is sealed up the best it can be. With that being said, let's get her put in the car. All right, so now that the gas tank is in, the next order of business is the radiator situation. This is the original out of that six cylinder. It's a, a three core, I believe. The four cores were like the big AC V8 cars. Um, but this one is leaking right in the middle and it's, uh, it's coming out the cores pretty good. So it will not hold, um, it will not hold any coolant. Um, also, the mount has uh, broken off. I mean, you could just solder it back on, but um, my buddy Dave, his dad is a pretty good radiator guy, and he said, you know, when they're peeing like that, you have to isolate the cores or the tubes, whatever. He, I'm, it's all above my head, but you have to isolate it. You can either fix it, recore it, but either way, it's expensive to do. So for 150 bucks shipped, I got this off of eBay. This is from Black Horse Racing, and it's a 59 through 64 GM three core aluminum. And what's nice is the two fitting holes right there line up exactly, the outlets and the inlets line up exactly, and it's a direct bolt-in. We'll go to the 64 Impala here. And as you guys can see, you can run a, a factory shroud if it's a V8 car. Um, the transmission lines, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but they line right up. Everything is nice. So the, uh, the old one is going in the scrap bin. No reason to spend three or four hundred dollars on rebuilding it when you can get an aluminum one off of eBay, you know, for 150 bucks shipped. So I'm not sponsored by them. I just use these a lot. And if you guys are putting a radiator in X frame, these are almost a direct fit. These two holes right here, they line up pretty good. The bottom, uh, the bottom hole, which is right here, not enough mount, so you only run four screws, or you can put a hole in it somewhere. Um, but I think four is sufficient. So going to drop this thing in, get it all hooked back up, uh, get the cooling system working and then we're gonna drive this thing for a little bit. Well, it's all part of it. The uh, radiator, or I'm sorry, the water pump is dripping a little bit, so I must not have got enough, uh, enough torque on those bolts, or I just didn't have a dab of silicone where it should have been. Either way, it is running a lot smoother now. It's not getting hot, but it is leaking, so that has to be addressed. So, I'm probably gonna pull the water pump off uh, re reseal it, maybe get a new gasket, and try this again. So do you guys ever have a day that you just really don't want to work on cars anymore? Because that's how today went. I've, uh, I've pulled the water pump off twice now, it was leaking. Third time, it was sealed up nice and good. Um, started to bleed the system. Had a uh, no spill coolant jug right there. Had about this far off the bottom, and somehow it overflowed, flooded the the shop here, car got hot. So got that dialed back in, um, let it cool down, filled it back up. Oh no, the trunk badge fell off. That's a shame. However, now that a 15 minute job took two hours, I got the front wheels on. Um, my buddy Andrew at their shop put uh, new wheel bearings and races in for me. Got those put back on. I did wash the car a little bit, just kind of uh, take the dust off of it. And this car is awesome. I also put three of the four hubcaps on. That one was missing a hubcap when I got it, so I figured let's leave it the way I got it. So the plan with this car is it's been sitting for 20 years in Kansas. 
and I've driven it around the farm a little bit here. Just got the title a couple weeks ago in the mail. Um, I'm going to take this to my buddy David Marshall's. There's a car show out by them tomorrow. So we're going to put this thing in a car show. We're going to see what people say about it. Brand new radiator, thermostat. I know people say yes or no on, on uh, silicone, depending on who you ask. It is just a thin coat, guys. I didn't go crazy with it, but it did seal up nice. Uh, better than the uh, paper gasket that came with it did. Runs real good now, drives real good. Brakes are all brand new, front and back. But yeah, I'm just curious to see, you know, in a car show with restored cars. Uh, I am gonna clean this thing out tomorrow with Dave and Marshall when I get to their house. But the dash cleaned up really nice. A nice blue-gray interior with the gothic gold on the outside. Uh, seats kind of tattered. See what I can do to vacuum this thing out tomorrow. Uh, the trunk's real nice. Again, needs cleaned out. So now I'm gonna drive it. I'm gonna show you guys the little little driving test here. We'll get her loaded, and the next time you guys see this car, we'll be out in Chicago. I got my fancy uh, starter here. Put the negative cable back on. Points. Ignition hood down. I'm not going to latch it because I'll break the uh, loser switch. Let's hop on in and go back to 1959. There's drive. Down the road we go. Back in time. All the stuff behind me is making a ton of noise. I'm sure that's what you guys are hearing, all the creaks and cracks and all that fun stuff. But we're driving a car that was sitting in a shed for 20 years. There's reverse, works nice. I still need to replace this glass and this glass, but I can always do that next week. That wasn't a, a necessity to get it on the road again. And there we go. We're going back to the shop. When's the last time you've seen an all white moth before? Can't say I've ever seen one. I'm just gonna leave him alone. But anyways guys, we're back. Uh, the car show video did not turn out as planned. So I've got a burnout video of Dave, or a lack thereof. put that in the video just for a little bit of fun. But uh, the 59's back home safe and sound. Me and Marshall spent about an hour on Saturday cleaning it out. The vacuum uh, was not working, so I still need to vacuum it out. Dash cleaned up really, really nice. Seats cleaned up nice. Uh, door panels kind of did. They would just need replaced, obviously. Next thing on the docket, though, is to get uh, new weather stripping and get the window put in. Not gonna do that today. That'll be a new video um, in a couple weeks. Got some tools coming to do this job a lot easier. And uh, to end the video today, I'm gonna show you guys a super awesome 61 Biscayne. I paid 1500 bucks for it. I put it out there for a little while for two grand. I had to get a title, uh, hauled it home. So pretty much breaking even. And the floors are bad, the frame was bad. This rocker's real bad and nobody wants to buy it. So unfortunately, it's just gonna sit here for another two years if I don't do something with it. And that something with it is pulling the engine, keeping the engine in transmission, and my friend out in Nebraska is getting it. So with that being said, this car has literally been sitting since last June when me and Marshall got it to run again. Gonna hook up the fuel pump. Check this out, guys. I've had it running for a little bit here. The key still works, fires right up. So this will be a good engine to keep around uh, for a future project. Six cylinder, three speed, 235. Um, fairly, fairly common engines. And I've got a 62 outside. Check this out, guys. Key shuts are down. I've got a 62 outside. Um, that the motor knocks real bad. It's a six cylinder three speed. So 
Might just swap this into it or find a car with no motor, no trans and swap this into it as well. So we will see. I'm gonna keep all the linkages, all that good stuff here. Not gonna film me pulling the engine. You guys don't wanna watch that. But we have saved one car, the 59 Biscayne, and one is gonna be used, give us life to save others, the 61 Biscayne. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up. One solid color, gothic gold, another solid color. I don't really know what this is actually called in 61, but uh, these two colors are very, very iconic to the time period. It's just funny that they're in here. Um, but yeah, one's gotten saved. One's gonna be a, a life donor here for other cars. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I love this 59 Biscayne right over here. I'm glad we picked it up. Just has such an awesome look to it. Put the dog dishes back on. Um, yeah, just gonna enjoy it now and, uh, and have some fun with it. So thank you guys for watching. My name is Ryan with Iowa Classic Cars. There we go, right there. And I'll catch you guys next time.